I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, sitting here just hoping to watch some good League of Legends, hoping to uh, get some good time in, man. So I'll be taking over. And it looks like we have a pretty good showdown between Repot, Maokai, and Squirtles. And we actually have a game pause. But then we'll, we'll get into it right now. Both teams come out of base. Sticks, let's look at this team, these teams a little bit, because there's one pick in particular that we haven't seen on the Rift in a long time, and that is the Urgot top. Tell me how that pick is going to work out, at least as far as this game goes and in the dynamics of their team composition. It's just something we don't usually see uh, anymore on the Rift. Uh, the interesting thing about Urgot, and he is about to get a rework, the interesting thing about Urgot is that he functions within a team comp as this sort of armor shredding off tank. You're going to see him build a Black Cleaver, you're going to see him build a Muramana, and he's going to be able to dish out a lot of damage while also reducing the armor of everyone within the E Cloud and with the Black Cleaver stacks. So he's going to be able to have a lot of impact in these mid game fights if they're forced into chokes, where you can just enable the by and the Caitlyn to deal more damage. Exactly. And we did see a little bit of uh, action in the mid lane. It was a sort of like a cheesy bushwhack, uh, bush gank starting off. But Echo did get out. He did have to use his flash, however, and he had the base. But other than that, we should go back to seeing standard starts. We'll see Vi start on her red buff, while Amumu will start his blue. So very standard. And just go over these team comps overall with me. We see uh, Team Repot, Maokai. We have Top Hurtislea on this Maokai, uh, as the, the team name suggests. And a lot of good burst damage coming out from mid lane, as well as the support. Uh, tell me how they're going to want to function uh, to win this game. Uh... All right, well, everyone, give us a second. We have to get our color casters replay actually working. He bug splatted for a second there. So give us a yeah, second. Sorry, just, uh, a simple clash of the replay client. We're going to get back in here. Thank you, because for some reason, maybe I have too much. I'm going to stop running skin spotlights. You got too much crap running. Yeah, no, my client just like completely like. Yeah, and I've been, I've been skipping like for the last forever. But when you're ready, I'm I'm gonna be at two thirteen. Okay. Oh, yeah, back. That's why I sound like a complete bone. That's why I sound like a complete vulnerable for a second there, because I was sitting there trying to figure out why I was frame skipping. <laughs> Everything's fantastic. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool. We're part of a team. Ah, two thirteen, correct? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Let me just make sure all my scoreboard and everything is fixed real quick. Because it reset for some reason. Okay, I'm ready. And we're back here live again. And no real action going down so far still as we see a little bit of training in the bot lane. But I want to go back to this top lane really quickly. And correct me if I'm wrong, Six, but what you want to see from this Urgot is that he can be kind of a lane bully. When he hits that W, when he hits the grenade, and he can hit those Qs, he can really poke you out of lane, even if you're a tank. And what can 
repop Maokai due to counter this to make sure that Maokai doesn't come out with too big of a disadvantage. We do know Maokai is a jungler that can't is known for being able to leave the top lane behind, but you don't want him to get too far behind to be able to impact these team fights later in the mid game. And this is what they should be doing. Just uh, by coming in, getting a little bit of a pressure gank, shoving Maokai back, uh, giving Urgot and flame priority there, but. Urgot, one of Urgot's uh, greatest weaknesses is that he is immobile. You're gonna see, see them being able to get a lot of early game stop on him, and he's gonna be very vulnerable without his flash, especially against the Maokai that can just twisting advance onto him. He is going to be a lane bully, but we'll see how comfortable he is in the matchup. And speaking of flashes, they did get Maokai's flash on the earlier gank from the Vi. And now she's just going to return to jungle farming. And Purgus Lee will already be pushed out of lane. She might be able to stay in CS, but if he lands another one of those grenades, she will be forced to back and then waste her TP, which then gives Urgot more of a, T a TP advantage for later fights. Maybe you see a bot lane party come out from Squirtles to take advantage of that. Uh, but then again, Urgot not really one of those champions that's known for trying to TP in the fights. Yes, he does get a little beefy uh, toward the middle game, once he, especially once he gets to the Black Cleaver. Uh, but he's not someone that you want TPing down. Uh, and there he goes, land the grenade again, and that will be Hurtisley actually having to take a back now. This isn't too monumental for Hurtis, though. She's just going to be able to TP back to the turret, get a lot of the XP in Farm. It's not going to end up lane all that much, especially as you mentioned, because Urgot isn't really somebody that you want to team down to the bot lane. That'll change after his level 6 spike. He's actually very effective. You can get a flank board behind and use his ulti to reposition the fight effectively. But I don't think that this uh, TP advantage off of Urgot is really going to impact the game in any major way. And we see Vi, she misses the Q, trying to lay down some damage on this Amumu while invading. And she will use the Blast Cone to escape, but Echo goes in, the Z Drive shift going down. But she will escape, low health, and it looked like she was trying to maybe get a cheesy kill onto Mumu coming off the game from Ari when that didn't really uh, go as well. They didn't get a kill from it, but it ended up backfiring on her. Now Mumu will go in, gets the match to speed up, misses the Q though, misses the bandage toss. And that'll be another failed gank coming out from Repot Maokai. The Amumu not really having much of an effect early, and that's mainly because um, something that's wrong with Amumu is not obviously an S-tier jungler is sometimes his ganks can be telegraphed, and even when they aren't telegraphed, it's very easy to dodge a bandage toss once it comes out, which is his only real form of CC and engage. And after Carmen was too far behind, he couldn't really catch up. And we see a little bit of trading in other lanes, but nothing really coming out of it. Ari having to take a back because of the aggressive Echo play. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the items though they have. Seems like everything seems to be standard, but Echo, it did start that corrupting uh, potion, corrupting glass, and is now buying a dark seal. What build is he going toward, uh, Sticks? He, he's going to be going toward his normal assassin mid build, probably the Lich Bane, his Echo, Merlin, all the on it. The Corrupting Potion and the Dark Seal give him an insane amount of sustain, and because he's a melee champion, the Corrupting Potion being able to give him just a little bit extra uh, uh, burn off of the passive is just really nice for Echo. It's an overall really nice package in some of these harder lanes where you're going to have a lot of uh, heavier trades. And I just also want to take a notice really quick while we don't have any real action at these two control wars going into Repop Maokai's jungle. One in the tri-bush in top lane, the other one going into blue buff. And I think that's really important to notice because right now for Vi on blue side, it's really hard for her to gank bottom lane because the angle just, unless you can sneak into the ramp push, it's really hard for her to gank that lane without a really hard engage from Nami who isn't level six yet and can't lay that down. And it's also really hard for her to gank top side unless Maokai is really far pushed in. And so I like the way those wards were placed to stop the aggressive by jungle or kind of neutralize her. But you see one of them get cleared right now. Well, and it's important that you do appreciate those wards because they're trying to identify by uh, pattern play and her ability. 
Uh oh, but we see. I gotta interrupt you really quick. The Vi goes in. Oh, but the Echo Ultimate. He gets caught in the Ergot Ultimate, though. But he will get out. He has to use his flash to get out. That'll be a flash down. That mid gank fail, but it does pressure him out of lane and gives Ari a little bit of relief. She was suffering really hard in that lane. Yeah, but Ari had to blow her flash there as well. Very well played by right Something that's important about the Amumu gank earlier, uh, not just that he got flashed away from the being age of Amumu, something that we all know is one of the problems with his hit, but he managed to take the flash away from Caitlyn while the level 6 spikes were about to start happening. So now you see that Varus has level 6. Caitlyn can't go up and walk up aggressively because Varus can just sit there and uh, chain of corruption her. So it, it it relieves a lot more pressure from the lane than you would previously think just from seeing a, a gank fail in the bot lane. And then it also opens up the route if Moomoo chooses to try and invade that bot side and get more pressure in the bottom side of the jungle, maybe get more pressure around uh, the Cloud Drake and around mid lane. But we see Hurriously going in on Urgot, the Twisted Advance going down, a Moomoo Bandit Toss does land, by coming up for the counter gank, does land a Q, a Moomoo lays down the ultimate, that will be first blood going to Maokai, they get the Urgot, and now Vi is on the run. Twisted Advance lands, she should go down here any minute, and that will be a kill going to Dragonite level 99, and that's two going to Team Repod Maokai. Very well. And now it looks like War Turtle might go down, but nope, the Nami heal does come in and save him, uh, save the Caitlyn. ADC Kai does take a couple of turret shots though, and that will force him to back off. And that's just the the difficulty of going in. He did actually use the ultimate to try and engage there, but just not enough damage following up these early levels to be able to take War Turtle out. And she will be able to sustain and stay in lane. But a good try, and we see Repop Maokai being extremely proactive and coordinating their proactivity. The side lanes both engaging at the same time, trying to take advantage of by not being around. Oh, and you see this in this bot lane, this Varus is just consistently putting down so much pressure with his piercing arrows on the board turtle. The fact that the top of the lane actually has a kill and is only 9 CS down is huge for Repop Maokai in range versus melee matchup. And even our bot lane of Varus still has 6 CS. Oh, but Vi's gonna go in, she lays down the ultimate on the ADC Kai, you see the shot come down from Caitlyn, it will not kill, Hurtlessly it TP's in, the band off, misses on Butter Freelow, Hurtlessly it will not take that push to advance in, now just disengage, and we see Echo going in onto Ari in the mid lane, this could be a kill, Ari trying to dodge out, use the Q, can she land a W to try and mitigate some of this damage, and nope, that should be a kill going down to the Echo, Ari falls in the mid lane. And here you just see a little bit of a lack of respect from Ultimate Ace coming out on this. Ari, Ninja Blood is uh, an assassin player at the core of him. He's his main champion pool. And once he gets on top of you with Echo, there's just not much that you can do as Ari unless you want to blow your ulti and your flash and get away. His ability to chase with phase dive is just so impressive once you actually get on top of these uh, squishy mid laners. And now Repop Maokai has a three kill lead, but more importantly, they have pressure in mid and bot lane, and it's looking really good for their team comp. One that wants to get ahead and then stay ahead. Very good front to back team fighting. And if Squirrel doesn't do something soon, get proactive, get a gank in this top lane. You see the top lane turret already about to go down soon. Urgot heading back up there to defend. They'll be put in a really sore spot coming into mid game. You just see that this is the, the, the uh, this <laughs> game is being played on patch 7.4, and so you see the power of Bear is still being very much more than we were. So we're gonna have Red Side Bear is coming out from the pod, and now Kaya is very able to use his position effectively and get this Bear is big. They're gonna have complete control over Bear and with the Maokai split pushing in the bot lane, but we'll see if they can execute on it. And now we see Vi laying down wards, and the ward coverage from Squirtles isn't that good. They have one ward uh, protecting the R in the mid lane from a gank, and they have a ward in the tri-bush, 
but I don't believe any gains to really come from those two sides. And we've seen Engage, the corrupting, uh, it all goes down. Mumu gets to kill the Varus. I'm sorry, I completely forgot the name of Varus ultimate for a second there, but the most important thing is the kill goes down in the bot lane, and now Mumu's gonna transition over to those plates, to that Cloud Drake. Chain of Corruption, yes indeed. And so now that should be a free Cloud Drake. The power of Varus is able to follow up on the so well. He provides all the CC and utility with providing the poke that has different and even then, he actually started that engage. And that's just the power of AD carries like Jin and Varus that can start their own engage so you don't have to. You can take those rain sports that do a lot of damage. And even then, they're a great asset in team fights because you don't have to wait for the Amumu to come down. You can start it on your own and have him follow up. And that'll be Cloud Drake going to repog Maokai. And with a about 3,000 gold lead going into 14 minutes in game. They're looking to continue taking clear control of this game. What should be their next step, though, uh, Sticks? And what should be Squirtle's next step to try and get themselves back into this game? Squirtle needs to be able to apply pressure. I mean, they can't just let this Echo sit here and uh, continue to farm up. The, the Varus lane is just going to continue to snowball if they play it appropriately. Urgot is going to be able to make his own advantages. So the only place that you can really put some pressure Hold on. It, we see the Max W yeah, coming out. The phase dot coming from uh, Echo. And that will take out Nami. And War Turtle will be next. She should go down shortly. Another phase. Uh, no, not another phase. Ever. Actually, he throws out the Q to get the kill. And that should be first tower actually going to repop Maokai if they push this lane out correctly. Ari was trying to get Echo on the backside, headed back to mid lane, but it was warded up. He was able to see the control ward put down and able to phase that ward the wall and get back to lane safely. And that was a well executed, coordinated play coming out of repop Maokai. Very good communication on that play, of course. It was a very good realm, get a very good angle. It just it accentuates the point that I was making a second ago. They need to get this echo under control. They need to put a cap on this. Otherwise, the echo just has potential to carry against the team that really has control to effectively deal with them. Besides, by ulting and by ulting the echo, you know that you're going to have a bad time from that it. Exactly, and there he goes in again onto the Ari, just bullying the crud out of her. And the band shots will land from Dragon level 99. And the position reverser tries to come out from Urgot. I can't remember the name of that ultimate, but he still goes down anyways. Reverser. Thank you, friend. Thank you. <laughs> Even though in the long run, that's too late to save my life. It's but important that Dragon Knight is applying pressure top here because this is like their one losing lane. So being able to get the tower down, allowing them to now rotate the bot to top lane, as I believe that they should. Is going to relieve all the pressure off a of mountain. Okay, they're going to stick him under a tower, allow him to continue farming, start executing this red side bear strategy by gaining control of the river. And I believe you're exactly right. That's exactly what they should do. This bomb tower will be going down soon. ADC Kai, the Nami tidal, tidal wave comes out. ADC Kai heals. He throws out the chain of corruption to get away. The heal of the flash goes down. Carmel will block the ace in the hole. And they are running. They are cutting away, but the mantra shield should allow them to do that perfectly fine. If that turret doesn't go down. Squirtle is able to save the bot lane turret, but it won't stay up for that much longer. If they do exactly what you say and rotate bot to top and top to bot, you'll probably see it go down within the next five minutes or so. And so I don't even know if that was worth the cost of trading so many summoners and ultimates uh, to save a Doom turret. But it was also greedy on Repop Maokai. Squirtle knows that they're behind in gold right now, so they know that they have to try and take some of these little percentage plays. So I don't blame them for trying to make a play that was very close to a kill there. If they manage to kill Kai, they're able to sub up the lane with that tempo. Then they maybe get control of this bottom side river that could possibly lead into a dragon that's going to be coming in a couple minutes. But it's just a catch-22 you saw there of ADC Kai using all of his mana for the pressure. Doesn't have any mana and then fight afterwards. But you see him taking up the tower here, and I assume that a lane swap is going to follow. They just wanted to get that gold on that ADC Kai before uh, they start to try to up some resources for a bit. Indeed, as we see the bot lane turret go down just a few seconds ago, 
And you already see, actually, Karma rotating toward mid. Vare slowly making his way there to the jungle. Wanted to pop the Scryer Bloom to make sure that he did not get ganked. Going through River on his way there. And it looks like they actually might try and group up to so push this mid tower next. Oh, I... so much and... damage on that piercing arrow. Yeah, and just that's the power of the 7.4 bears. And now Ari, oh my good, and now she's gone. And she can't even help defend. If she stays, then that might be a chain of corruption on her, and that could be a death with an echo phase diving cube. This tower should be going down soon. Actually, Squirtle will donate all the resources. Oh, the chain of corruption actually comes down. Now it will be a ultimate ace going down to ADC Kai. He will take some turret shots. And the move of Bandit Sox comes in on the Minecraft home. He's gonna keep going in. He's taking damage, but they can't seem to take down fast. The is already on top of Caitlyn, keeping her down. The phase dive comes in. The connect position reverser coming in to stop Echo, but he keeps going. The phase dive will get the kill. Now Hurslia might go down to the Urgot, and he will. Dragon Knight, level 99, might go down as well. He's trying to survive. The Mantis Shield will come through, though. But her free load will go down to Echo as well. And this could be a clean ace, but they will not go for the Urgot. They will just back off and try and finish off this turret. Actually, no, I don't think they'll even do that because Echo has to take a back. But what a, what a just a stomp. You just see the power coming out from Repop Maokai and how far they are ahead. Even this early in the game, all their tanks went in. The only tank that went down was Hurris Lee, and that's because uh, the Maokai got trapped underneath the turrets. Otherwise, everyone else that should have gone down survived. Echo was able to ultimate out, save his own life. Amumu walked out of there uh, with his life. Should have gone down as well, and now Repot Maokai is just clearly in the lead in this game. And you see the attention that was given top lane by him taking off now, giving her just Leo the actual pink stats that she needed in the team guide to deal with giant bird shots during that fight. One thing that's really important to touch on as they went to set up this play was the wave management that happened. Uh, both top and bot were pushing in when they went for that dive in mid lane. So it didn't matter what Squirtle did. If they managed to uh, turn that fight, they were still going to lose turret damage and a whole bunch of gold in the top lane. Bot lane needs to be pushed in. If that play is done even more positive for Repot now, Kai, we would have been able to spin down with the wave bot lane and just take the free here too. So it's important to look at what this team is doing to maintain their lead. And Ari will take a lot of damage there. Possibly thinking about going in to steal the dragon. I don't know why. It's just a cloud drake. Feels bad, man, for Repop Malka that they couldn't get anything better to help them uh, extend this lead. But you know, that's two cloud drakes over, I believe. And actually, a third cloud drake is actually pretty good once you get all three because of the rotations. And that's about all they're good for. But when you have a mobile team like Repop Maokai with the Echo and the Karma with the Mantra Shield, Cloud Drakes might actually help them out, not as much as other Drakes could, but it's still a pop. But as we start to get up into these upper levels of play, you start to see the real power and uh, efficiency that Cloud Drake gives you when you lose back in the game, like you said on the rotations. But that's that, that's a small thing to talk about. I mean, we talk about the like, red side bear is calm that wants to be able to control around the bear area, that wants to be able to just zoom around, clear the mid lane, clear the top lane, get vision back in the river. And these cloud drakes start becoming one of the best drakes, obviously not in the water or an inferno. Uh, but there's, it's going to be very useful for them coming into this mid game to allow them to use their comp effectively. So this, these two these two air drakes are going to be able to uh, enable them to do so much more around this map, get their forward vision, keep pressing their lead. It, it allows them to be places like they shouldn't normally be allowed to be. And if they get this third uh, drake, I would say that their, with their composition, that is at least like a 5k gold swing. At least in the efficiency of the members being able to run around. Especially in a composition that can very clearly with the Maokai and with the Echo go a very easy 1-3-1, a very safe 1-3-1 with the Karma. They were protect the three members there and the mobility just able to run Squirtle around the map and apply map pressure. And it isn't looking good for Squirtle going into the late game. They don't really have the tools to uh, respond to pressure in all three lanes. The Urgot right now can't really 1v1 anybody. The only person that might be able to 1v1 somebody is, I would say, the Vi. And that's 50-50, uh, depending on who she's fighting on Repop Maokai's side. And like we said, even with the rotation speed, if someone's in 1v1, 
unless the team is on the other side of the map to where they can't even help out the split pusher, that's a very fast response time. And as long as the split pusher can survive, they can still respond to whoever responds to the to the person to the Maokai or the Echo. So uh, it's a tough road to climb for Scroto right now. But I do believe they're saving grace, though, that they can find a competent team fight, maybe have Ari pick somebody off in the back line, or allow this Caitlyn to do damage, consistent DPS from a safe distance. They can pull this off, but we'll see. Repo Makai shot the group round bottom tower, and Dragon Knight 1199 actually trying to threaten them off the turret while Echo goes in. But I don't think he can confidently do that while the Maokai split, uh, split pushes top lane. But he does have TP, so we might see a fight break out soon. Who knows? And you see the dynamic of top lane really shifting. Her just is holding her own in the top lane, and now she's able to go in and actually trade on this Urgot because he doesn't have those black meter yet. He doesn't have the items that he needs to really be able to come to these things. You see this air dragon allowing them to just rotate around the map and execute the speed clip, but the important thing to note here is that this isn't just uh, denying farm and experience from people using the farm crafting to the towers. They're actually continuously raiding the side jungle camps and uh, Turtles jungle. So they're depriving XP of their entire team by literally absorbing all of the GS that they can. It's very hard to come back from a position like this when two chickens are always gone. Your Vi is not going to be able to scale. She's not going to be able to go in because she's not going to be tanky enough and or have enough damage to actually burst somebody. And this Echo is just going to be a terror in the bottom. And I think that's another thing we need to focus on as well is that Vi is not building tank. Now usually when you see a tank, oh, and Dragonite will not have, we'll land the Curse of Sad Mummy. And that will go down to ADC Kai, Ultimate Age, going down extremely fast there. The Ferris damage, just too much to handle. And that should also be mid turret going down. They will continue to push mid in. And this could be an inhibitor turret. I don't think they'll push in that far. But the Vi is already down to half health. Butter Freeload. And as I was about to say before the action went down. And actually, Echo just soloed out Kaelin in the bottom lane. Now be two turrets going down. Now be two pushes going down in mid and bot now that Squirtle cannot respond to. I feel like there's a lot of coming out from the squirrel, not respecting the Mumu's engage potential, not respecting Echo's ability to drop power aggro with his ulti, which is something that is very crucial to Echo's kid and something that you see all the time in solo queue. So I'm not really sure what's going down. I feel like there is a little bit of breakdown in communication coming out from the portal at this point in the game after knowing that they're this far down the But they really need some real deal with this pressure and the side lanes that they can get to a point where they can actually group with their team comp strong with this X and with this Urgot now has the Black Cleaver to actually be able to enable this Caitlyn even at this stage in the game to chunk through this Maokai even with their two armor items. So, and we, see, we will see Vi go in, uh, try and land something. She hit the Vault Breaker onto Tier 7 but she wasn't able to fall through, not enough damage to actually take out the Karma. But you're right, and I don't think they're not just disrespecting the, the Amumu uh, engage, but they also disrespected the Echo damage. You see he's going that extremely high burst build of going to Proto Belt, and why would you just leave Caitlyn alone trying to hold off an Echo when he can very easily three-shot her with a Proto Belt phase dive and an EQ? And at at this point, another part of disrespect is that Vi isn't even going tank. Usually in a composition like this where you only have one possible tank and that would be the Vi, she's going for the Triforce build. And now they have no tank to frontline any of this damage coming out from Repop Maokai. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but Repop has a 12,000 gold lead, and I think we can uh, easily call game kind of early right now. We're just kind of going through the death throws <laughs> this fast. Well, we'll see if Maokai is actually able to burst this out in a very, uh, very clean way because that's going to make a big statement on the rest of this series. I, I really want to see them close this out cleanly without any more death. Focus on this red side Varus comp, get control of that top side jungle like you're seeing. Be able to have Maokai still pushing the bot lane. And I, just, I, I just want them to be able to close out really gonna be a big thing for their tempo. 
And just look at the vision that Repop Maokai has. They have their split pusher completely covered in the bottom side of the map, while the other four members of the team, Amumu, Karma, Echo, and the Varus, will push top lane and get this tower easily. And Maokai is just going to keep spreading this team out. It's going to be incredibly hard for Scroll to even re respond to this. Look at the damage come out from the Varus Q alone. Already taken down to half health. And uh, I don't think, unless they can catch Maokai out, and he was already grouped up with Echo and Hulu in the mid, unless they can get a crucial pick on the Varus or onto this Echo, this incessant split push is just going to continue to ravage Squirrel's base. And I think that Repop Maokai is actually slowly starting to set up for that Baron. Hopefully they can do it better than EU and we won't have uh, infinite Baron fights and juggles. But who knows? Uh, even so, the, the red side bears comp will definitely win a Baron dance, or even a Baron bait, as you see about to come out. Yeah. Yep. And you see Squirtle moving in, trying to clear out some of the vision in their own juggle, trying to reclaim their their side of the map. But how long can they do it before the Repot Malachi moves in? A chain of corruption does land on the Urgot. The Mantra Q will come out. Will... Oh, the Bandit Chop comes out. Open it is caught. The Nurse Stab Mommy comes out. And that should be a dead already. But no, she shifts out of the open. Oh, ADC Kyle with the Snipe with a Q. And now the Bandit Chop comes out. The Micro Holmes, he has to flash. But he will go down to the Echo. And now Repot Malachi, they will move toward mid and look to get the inhibitor turn. Another Bandit Chop lost on the Urgot. Echo, phase dive in. The ball break comes out from Butterfly Fula, trying to stop him. That last bang toss misses. Echo is still going in, lands one more phase dive before going back to this turret, and this should be inhibitor down. And they could fall back and take Baron afterwards. And Echo just being able to go in with absolute incredulity, knowing that with his ulti and his team right behind him, if they even try to respond, they're just gonna get engaged upon. It's really disgusting at this point. And gonna go. Just a three items, but I'm sure that he has a fourth item by now because he's been around the map for so long. And I just we mentioned it at the very beginning that they're not going to have the ability to have Echo without the five but he big five in the early game. She didn't seem to be on the map and now she's trying to go to the But I think this just goes to show that Repop Maokai is good at playing from Echo. They're making very smart rotations. They're setting up their waves appropriately. They're fighting for vision where they need to. And Ninja's just been able to accelerate his goal and really put his foot down on, down on the throat of Squirtle and carry this game. And now we just have to think, what, what will Squirtle do for this next game? Will they try and ban the Echo? Or will they at least put Ultimate Ace on something that can have more of an impact from behind? Or maybe even get a new jungler uh, this vibe. It wouldn't be a problem if she had built tank and not gone for the Triforce. And now she finally has a Triforce, but it's way too late. They are so far behind. She won't have any impact. We'll see Echo TP the top lane and start getting another 4-1 split push started for Repot Maokai. But something has to change Squirtle, I believe, more champion-wise than anything else coming to this next game. Otherwise, just this really coordinated Repop Maokai team is going to destroy them. And we see Maokai go in with Twisted Advance. He pops the Vincent Maelstrom. Dragonite lands Curse Stabbing on the Mycroft. And now it should be Mycroft coming down, but he escapes. Bye. Lands the ultimate on the ADC Kai. She's in the back line doing damage. Ferris will actually go down. Tier 7 may go down next. Or not Tier 7. Get Tier 7. Uh, actually, no. We see the Urgot go down to Hurtis Leah. While we have Ninja Blood on the Echo in top lane pushing Inhibitor. Five will land a Volpergon tier seven, and he will actually go down finally, as I predicted several minutes ago. Called it. Ninja Blood will go in onto Ari, but he actually phase dives out, just trying to push in. And that, despite all that action, actually War Total landed some good damage on though, but he won't go down. Even though it was a two for one in favor of Squirtle, they still come out worse square with an inhibitor down and a third one looking to go. But again, you just see the macro play. The, the difference here is that they had to try and send Ari top lane, but why would they send Ari? They, they just needed to try and look for a 5v4 in the bot side jungle, allow Echo to kill the tower. It's a risky play, but at this point, hey, you're down like 14, 18k gold. Yeah, 18k gold. Like, 
you have to try and make something happen with this team fighting competition, and that means forfeiting your base. Ari wasn't even able to do anything against the Baron Dub. Uh, triple minion wave from that echo, and with him having Lich Bane, he practically two shots to the tower. It was a very well played uh, rotation by Pop now. Okay, again, just playing that split push extremely effectively. They just been able to execute their game plan for the entire game. And, uh, it's just beastly, even when he's just pulling pressure. And oh my goodness, that is not a good thing for a Squirtle. That is an Infernal Drake going over to repop Maokai. And now that Echo will do 8% more AP damage than he already was. And so will that Varus on the AD. And now I don't see them stop. They already were having a hard time stopping him. And maybe they could have gotten a fortunate team fight in their future. But now I, it's almost utterly impossible for them to stop him. They're gonna have double in hit, they're gonna have double super minions in all three lanes coming in, and this is gonna be game right now. Three pop Maokai pushing for the win. They're gonna try and stop some curses that money. We'll catch three people in. Blue Turret has been destroyed. We see Butterfilo in the back line again onto this Varus, but the redemption saves his life. The Butterfilo will go down. Echo, Chrono breaks backwards, and they destroy the base. And that'll be game one going over Repot Maokai. And what a display of power. So I think that it's important just for a second to touch on the things that Squirtle was doing correctly. Vi understood her role in this game. She understood that she needed to get on top of the Varus. I think that it was just a symptom of the entire map falling apart that Vi wasn't able to get away with this damage build, right? I think that Nami was doing everything that she could to support. Ari lost the lane early. Caitlyn was able to get ganked. Urgot was actually starting to scale. Urgot was starting to be relevant, but you 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 were dancing around the problem of their team composition earlier, not trying to call out the Urgot, but I'm going to call out the Urgot. This is not the composition for him. He is a fine pick situationally, and I think that against uh, Repot Maokai's team comp, it was perfectly fine. But they needed to be able to support it, and they needed this Ari to be able to provide some magic damage so that Maokai and Amumu could just go full armor and not have to worry about any damage stress. They already had all the mitigation that they needed. Do Clean you think game, it's their but... equivalent of a Fiora pick? I think that Fiora would have been a much better pick here just for her ability to we get a sustained tank going on if she was able to dive in with Vi. But, uh, again, I think that the Urgot was fine. I really do. I, I just, I, I don't think if they had the support there in the engage department, if they had, had like, even a Braum support, this Urgot would have been able to do so much more work. And I think that we need to give player of the game, if anybody has got a ninja blood to, there was a lot of good play from Repot Maokai overall, uh, and even though the side lanes were still generally winning, when it came to mid game and those team fights, that echo was just so powerful, applying so much pressure, so much damage pressure to that back line, is able to destroy Ari in the mid lane and get his team so many advantages. But we're gonna take a good five minute break before we hop into game two of Squirtle versus Repop Maokai. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. I've actually already got it up on stream, so I'm ready on game oh, two when you guys are. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, <dog. laughs> uh, that, that, was that was really good. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, other than me forgetting like every single name of every single like <laughs> ultimate you know, you from the first game. Them. You could just click yeah, that's on them. yeah, that's ability, what dude. that's what I started doing like app and then like I was like wait a minute and I just started hovering after I called I'd hover over the name because I just I was like wait I forgot I haven't seen the ergot in so long I was like hyper kinetic position what <laughs> hyper kinetic position reverser. <laughs> Name. I know like every ability name in this game pretty much and it's really ridiculous because I'm just Alright, <laughs> we got we got comment on Twitch that says shoutcasters are doing really well. Hey. Yeah. Lamau. So take your break, grab some water, take a drink, stretch your legs, let me know when you guys are ready to go eat. for game two. 